Numerical Computation, Chapter 9, Video 6. We have already looked at two Runge-Kutta methods, one for the first order and the other for the second order. So one is Euler's method and the other is Hoyne's method. And now we take a look at um, high order method. So we begin with uh, looking at general Runge-Kutta methods of order M. These methods take the following form. So the next value xk plus 1 is computed by x1 plus you will have um, in general m constants capital K1, K2 or the weight of Km and each of them will be um, multiplied by an, some certain corresponding weight. We call it W1, W2 and all the way to Wm. And then here the constants capital K's are computed as follows. K1 is usually always H times F evaluated TK and XK. And K2 is usually computed as H times F at TK plus some number A2 times H. A usually is a number less than 1. And X plus some number b2 times k1, where b2 is less than 1. And then k3 is computed by using both k1 and k2. So t is evaluated at tk plus a3h, but then for the x, you would add some b3 times k1 plus some constant, let's call it c3 times k2. And you continue going on until you reach the last constant, Km, and then that will be evaluated Tk plus Am times H, and then X, you would add on top a possibly all the previous case that you have computed with some kind of a linear combination add on top. And now here, the parameters um, are the weights that your choice, and all these AIs, and then all these BIs, and these CIs, and actually there are many, many, many of these parameters. They are carefully chosen to guarantee the order M. So if you um, count, you will see that actually here we have many, many more parameters than constraints. So usually the choices for these constants are... Um, not unique. Okay, so say for example, fourth order method, there could be multiple of them, multiple different combinations of these coefficients. We'll give you all fourth order. So among all fourth order methods, the most celebrated one is the um, classical Runge-Kutta fourth order method. It takes a very elegant form. So xk plus 1 is updated as xk plus 1 over 6 and times um, the sum of four constants k1, k2, k3, k4 added up in this simple way with weights 1, 2, 2, 1. And then here k1 is computed as h times f evaluated tkxk and then k2 is computed as h times f at tk plus half h and xk plus half k1. So this, this expression here is a good approximation of x prime at tk plus half h. And then k3 is computed as h times f evaluated at tk plus half h and xk plus, now this time is half k2, that's the k just being computed. We see that um, this part of k3 here is a good approximation to x prime at tk plus h half. And finally, k4 is computed as h times f at tk plus h, xk plus k3, the most recent k. So we see that um, this part here in K4, that's actually an approximation to X prime at TK plus H. 
So we see the method actually has very nice um, coefficients and very um, elegant in a way. One can show formally using Taylor expansion similar in in a very similar way as um, we did for Hoyne's method, we can show that this actually give us a local error of fifth order, and therefore the total error is fourth order. And we will uh, not go into the details there if any student shall be um, interested in working that out, and you're welcome to give it a try. Now we're going to view the Runge-Kutta fourth order method as actually the Simpson's rule in numerical integration. So recall the discussion we had for Hoyne's method of um, rewriting the ordinary differential equation into an integral form like that. And we see we need to find a good numerical approximation for this integration. So in the Runge-Kutta method, those constants k1, k2, k3, k4, they can serve as approximations to h times x prime at t k for k1, and k2 is an approximation to h times x prime at t k plus h half, and so is k3, but k4 is an approximation to x prime at t k plus h. Then we can set up the Simpson's rule for this integration, which will be um, h over 6. And then in the bracket, you add up the value at tk and the value at tk plus h, and 4 times the value at tk plus h half. And we see this can be achieved approximately by using the k1 plus 2k2 plus 2k3. This makes 4 of this, okay, and then a k4. And we see that this is actually exactly the classical Runge-Kutta fourth order iteration. Of course, this is just an argument and um, trying to build connection between um, differential equation and the numerical integration. A more rigorous proof will still have to be um, using Taylor series as we did for Hoyne's method. Okay, hope um, that was fun and uh, you enjoyed it and see you next time.